All right, we're going to do a little reading today out of Thich Nhat Hanh's The Miracle of Mindfulness. Now, what we are going to read today is not actually a writing or a story from Thich Nhat Hanh. It is one that he is retelling from Tolstoy, and it is the answer to the emperor's three questions. Amazing, amazing story. So here we go. It's about 12 to 13 minutes long. To end, let me retell a story of Tolstoy's, the story of the emperor's three questions. Tolstoy did not know the emperor's name. One day, it occurred to a certain emperor that if he only knew the answer to three questions, he would never stray in any matter. What is the best time to do each thing? Who are the most important people to work with? And what is the most important thing to do at all times? The emperor issued a decree throughout his kingdom, announcing that whoever could answer the questions would receive a great reward. Many who read the decree made their way to the palace at once, each person with a different answer. In reply to the first question, one person advised that the emperor make up a thorough time schedule, concentrating every hour, day, month, and year for certain tasks, and then follow the schedule to the letter. Only then could he hope to do every task at the right time. Another person replied that it was impossible to plan in advance and that the emperor should put all vain amusements aside and remain attentive to everything in order to know what to do at what time. Someone else insisted that, by himself, the emperor could never hope to have all the foresight and competence necessary to decide when to do each and every task. And what he really needed was to set up a council of the wise and then to act according to their advice. Someone else said that, the certain, that certain matters required immediate decision and could not wait for consultation. But if he wanted to know in advance what was going to happen, he should consult magicians and soothsayers. The responses to the second question also lacked accord. One person said that the emperor needed to place all his trust in administrators. Another urged reliance on priests and monks, while others recommended physicians. Still, others put their faith in warriors. The third question drew similar variety of answers. Some said science was the most important pursuit. Others insisted on religion. Yet, others claimed that the most important thing was military skill. The emperor was not pleased with any of the answers, and no reward was given. After several nights of reflection, the emperor resolved to visit a hermit who lived up on a mountain and was said to be an enlightened man. The emperor wished to find the hermit to ask him the three questions. Though he knew the hermit never left the mountain and was known to receive only the poor, refusing to have anything to do with persons of wealth or power. So the emperor disguised himself as a simple peasant and ordered his attendants to wait for him at the foot of the mountain while he climbed the slope alone to seek the hermit. Reaching the holy man's dwelling place, the emperor found the hermit digging a garden in front of his hut. When the hermit saw the stranger, he nodded his head in greeting and continued to dig. The labor was obviously hard on him. He was an old man, and each time he thrust his spade into the ground to turn the earth, he heaved heavily. The emperor approached him and said, I have come here to ask your help with three questions. When is the best time to do each thing? Who is the most important people to work with? And what is the most important thing to do at all times? The hermit listened attentively, but only patted the emperor on the shoulder and continued digging. The emperor said, you must be tired. Here, let me give you a hand with that. The hermit thanked him, handed the emperor the spade, and then sat down on the ground to rest. After he had dug two rows, the emperor stopped and turned to the hermit and repeated his three questions. The hermit still did not answer, but instead stood up and pointed, pointed to the spade and said, why don't you rest now? I can take over again. But the emperor continued to dig. One hour passed, then two. Finally, the, the sun began to set behind the mountain. The emperor put down the spade and said to the hermit, I came here to ask you if you could answer my three questions. But if you can't give me an answer, please let me know so I can get on my way and go home. The hermit left his head, or the hermit lifted his head and asked the emperor, Do you hear something running over there? The emperor turned his head. They both saw a man with a long white beard emerge from the woods. He ran wildly, pressing his hands against his bloody, 
against a bloody wound in his stomach. The man ran toward the emperor before falling unconscious to the ground, where he lay groaning. Opening the man's clothing, the emperor and the hermit saw the man had received a deep gash. The emperor cleaned the wound thoroughly and then used his own shirt to bandage it, but the blood completely soaked it within minutes. He rinsed the shirt out and bandaged the wound a second time and continued to do so until the flow of blow blood had stopped. At last, the wounded man regained consciousness and asked for a drink of water. The emperor ran down to the stream, brought back a jug of fresh water. Meanwhile, the sun had disappeared and the night air had begun to turn cold. The hermit gave the emperor a hand in carrying the man into the hut where they laid him down on the hermit's bed. The man closed his eyes and laid quietly. The emperor was worn out from a long day of climbing the mountain and digging the garden. Leaning against the doorway, he fell asleep. When he rose, the sun had already risen over the mountains. For a moment, he forgot where he was and what he had come here for. He looked over to the bed and saw the wounded man also looking around in confusion. When he saw the emperor, he stared at him intently and said in a faint whisper, Please, forgive me. But what have you done that I should forgive you? The emperor asked. You don't know me, your majesty, but I know you. I was your sworn enemy and I had vowed to take vengeance on you. For during the last war, you killed my brother and seized my property. When I learned that you were coming alone to the mountain to meet the hermit, I resolved to surprise you on your way back and kill you. But after waiting a long time there, and there was still no sign of you, so I left my ambush in order to seek you out. But instead of finding you, I came across your attendants who recognized me, giving me this wound. Luckily, I escaped. I escaped and I ran here. If I hadn't met you, I would surely be dead by now. I had intended to kill you, but instead you saved my life. I am ashamed and I'm grateful beyond words. If I live, I vow to be your servant for the rest of my life and I will bid my children and grandchildren to do the same. Please grant me your forgiveness. The emperor was overjoyed to see that he was so easily reconciled with a former enemy. He not only forgave the man, but promised to return all the man's property and to send his own physicians and servants to wait on the man until he was completely healed. After ordering his attendants to take the man home, the emperor returned to see the hermit. Before, before returning to the palace, the emperor wanted to repeat his three questions one last time. He found the hermit sowing seeds in the earth they had dug the day before. The hermit stood up, looked at the emperor, but your questions have already been answered. How is that? The emperor asked, puzzled. Yes, yesterday. You had not taken pity on, yesterday, if you had not taken pity on my age and given me a hand with digging these beds, you would have been attacked by the man on your way home. Then you would have deeply regretted not staying with me. Therefore, the most important time was the time you were digging in the bed. And the most important person was myself. And the most important pursuit was to help me. Later, when the wounded man ran up here, the most important time was the time he spent dressing his wounds. For if you had not cared for him, he would have died, and you would have lost the chance to be reconciled with him. Likewise, he was the most important person, and the most important pursuit was taking care of his wound. Remember that there is only one important time, and that is now. The present moment is the only time over which we have dominion. The most important person is always the person you are with, who is right before you. For who knows if you will have dealings with another person in the future. The most important pursuit is making the person standing at your side happy. For that alone is the pursuit of life. Tolstoy's story is like a story out of scripture. It doesn't fall short of any sacred text. We talk about social service, service to the people, service to humanity, service for others who are far away, helping to bring peace to the world. But often we forget that it is the very people around us that we must live for first of all. If you cannot serve your wife or your husband or your child or your parent, 
How are you going to serve society? If you cannot make your own child happy, how do you expect to be able to make anyone else happy? If all our friends in the peace movement of service communities of any kind do not love and help one another, help one another, whom can we love and help? Are we working for other humans or are we just working for the name of an organization? Service, the service of peace, the service of any person in need. The word service is so immense. Let's return first to the most modest scale. Our families, our classmates, our friends, our own community. We must live for them. For if we cannot live for them, whom else do we think we are living for? Tolstoy is a saint, what we Buddhists would call a bodhisattva. But was the emperor himself able to see the meaning and direction of life? How can we live in the present moment, live right now with the people around us, helping to lessen their suffering and making their lives happier? How? The answer is this. We must practice mindfulness. The principle that Tolstoy gives appears easy. But if we want to put it into practice, we must use the methods of mindfulness in order to seek and find the way. I've written these pages for our friends to use. There are many people who have written about these things without having lived them. But I've only written down those things which I have lived and experienced myself. I hope you and your friends will find these things at least a little helpful along the path of our seeking, the path of our return. The reminder, the most important three, time is now. Person, the person you are with, and the thing to do, make them happy. This book, for those that aren't familiar with it, this book was not intended to be a book. This book is a series of letters that Thich Nhat Hanh had been writing to a friend, and it was to teach them the concepts of mindfulness. And so this whole book is just about that. It's about the concepts of mindfulness, and he uses that story within these letters. If you go back and listen to this a few times, if you pick up the book and read this from time to time, I read that story four times per year. It's just a great reminder. I hope you enjoyed that today. Again, Thich Nhat Hanh, The Miracle of Mindfulness. Love you guys. Take care.